Last May, 60 Minutes on CBS did a report on the process of children detransitioning and also the lack of guidance for kids when it comes to their gender and perhaps if they'd like to change it. Here's part of that interview from Paramount Plus's program, 60 Minutes Plus. The reason why these child protection laws are needed are the same reasons why children can't go to a PG-13 movie or why they can't buy cough syrup until they're 18. If they can't buy cough syrup, why are we allowing them to be injected with massive doses of hormones? Joining us to discuss, Emily Gao, director of the DeVos Center for Religion and Civil Society at the Heritage Foundation. Also joined by our panelists for the day, we have Mike Murthy. Mayor of Lexington, Minnesota. He's also running for governor of the state. And we'd like to get this conversation going here with Emily. Um, what, Emily, we, we've seen recently uh, the issue of children deciding that the gender they were born into is not the gender they feel they are. And we've seen uh, the process of detransitioning take place by kids expressing their, wa- their desire to have these hormones to transition their gender. Uh, you're speaking out and your organization speaking out against that. Talk to me about why this issue is such an important one right now. Thank you. Well, we want to see every child flourish, mind, body, and soul. And the reality is that we're created male and female, and you cannot actually change a person's sex. And so children are being taught something that is false and very misleading. And the consequences of them following the path of a gender transition is that they could be put onto experimental hormones that would block their puberty, and then eventually they could even be put onto sur- they could even have surgery on themselves, and that would lead to ultimately the sterilization of children. And children are far too young to understand the consequences of sterilization. Joe Collins is also joining us now, former congressional candidate for California, also a U.S. Navy veteran. Uh, And we thank you, Joe, for joining us because we want to keep this conversation going. And it is a very important one at this point. Um, We've seen several state governors sign legislation regarding uh, detransitioning and transgender specific related laws uh, in Arkansas, issuing a bill that bans the sterilization of gender dysphoric children through experimental use of hormones and surgeries there. Uh, Mike Murphy, I know you're running for governor in Minnesota. How important is the role of an elected leader when it comes to these decisions made in the household? Yeah, that's a really good question and good morning um, to everyone. But the thing is, young minds are fragile and there's a lot of mental illness going on in this country right now. And I I think that this is a topic that we need to address in a different way. Um, When you're a child, you, you, you don't know what's going on, right? I feel like a lot of a lot of parents are pushing this on because themselves are, are suffering from the mental illness or denial or, or some sort of life situation. And we really have to look at what's good for the youth. Now, if you're an adult and you choose to make this decision after, you know, your, your mind develops and you become more more mature and you choose to transition, that's all you. I mean, that you have the right to do that. I'm not against that, but we should not be transitioning our youth in this state. And and I would have to say, if I'm elected governor of Minnesota, I would ban uh, those types of surgeries and hormone treatments for children in Minnesota. And, and Emily, it, does it really have to do with the age at which some of these children begin the transition process? Have you heard from people who've undergone the transition process or at least started it and, and had regrets like those detransitioners that we heard from in the 60 Minutes piece? Absolutely. We hear from detransitioners all of the time. We've hosted several events at Heritage um, highlighting detransitioners' voices. And it's important for Americans to understand that in the United Kingdom, the High Court has recently put a limit on children under 16. They cannot give informed consent to receive these experimental uses or hormones. And if the United Kingdom and also now Finland and Sweden have followed suit, are limiting the use of hormones on children to treat gender dysphoria, then the U.S. should be taking a closer look at how we are seeking to protect children's bodies. Um, And it's important to understand that this is uh, oftentimes related to gender dysphoria, which is a mental health issue. So changing the way a child's body looks doesn't address the underlying distress that they feel. And that's what we hear all the time from detransitioners is that, you know, after they 
went on hormones or even after they had surgeries, they found that they still had underlying distress and they deeply regretted what had been done to their bodies. And also in the report, it mentioned the easy access that some of these kids have to getting these hormones or undergoing those surgeries. Emily, have you heard from kids who have expressed interest in changing their gender and had been able to do so, maybe even without the uh, signing off from a parent? Well, we hear a lot from parents who are very unhappy that their children are able to consent um, at the age even of 15 in Oregon and um, in California and Washington State. They can consent to hormones and surgeries without their parents' knowledge. And we're hearing about girls as young as 13 having double mastectomies. Um, These girls are so young, they can't possibly understand what is being done to them. And yet, all of this ideology is being pushed upon children through their public schools. As young as kindergarten, we are seeing children being read stories that are in cartoon format about gender transition. And they have no concept of what that actually means. All right. That is Emily Gow joining us on the program, shedding light on this.